Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Well, isn't this video different? <laughs> I am going to be doing a tipsy skincare routine. What? Hiram drinks? Yeah, bitch, I do. I actually got this idea when I was reacting to Lauren from Laura DIY, her skincare routine video. I don't know if it was a tipsy skincare routine, but she was drinking while doing her skincare routine, and I was like, oh. <gasps> Why have I never thought of that before? Bring the tequila. I'm actually so excited for this video because I've never had a drink in a video before. I figured I would lead you through a skincare routine as I answer some of your guys' questions from Instagram as I also get shit-faced. Short disclaimer, I say shit-faced, but I'm gonna keep it appropriate. If you are underage watching this video, this is not a message saying that underage drinking is okay. It is not okay. There is a large difference between drinking when you're of age and drinking when you're underage. And it's called the fucking government. <laughs> you wanna listen to that. This is just gonna be chill, truthfully. I say I'm gonna get shit-faced. I am someone who unfortunately is a heavyweight when it comes to alcohol. I don't know if it's because of the years, decades, hundreds of years of alcoholism that runs in my family. That could do something to do with it. But if you wanna get me buzzed and feeling the alcohol, it'll take me about 12 to 15 cocktails, each cocktail having two to three tequila shots in them. So it takes quite a while. And that's not even drunk, bitch. That's just like me feeling the alcohol. And I really don't wanna spend three hours on this video. <laughs> I do have some drinks prepared. I'm probably gonna have four to eight drinks, loosen up a little bit, maybe get a little tipsy and call it good. But who knows, this could be a night where all of a sudden after two drinks, I'm feeling hard, you never know. Now bitch, when I say a tipsy skincare routine, I do not mean drinking tequila straight out of the bottle. I am not in college anymore and even when I was in college, I still wouldn't do that. We are of class on this channel, we will only drink fine cocktails. No, but seriously, I hate drinking just like straight up alcohol from the bottle. Ugh. I'd much rather go the route of making a drink for myself than drinking it straight. Like that shit will make me feel like I have to throw up and it is not a fun experience and I'd rather just not deal. So I will be making different cocktails throughout the night and kind of giving you guys a sneak peek into one of my biggest passions, which is actually mixology, cocktail creations. I love making new flavors, blends, cocktails for friends. And truthfully, I don't drink very often, but when I do have friends over, I love to make them a drink. It's just so fun to experiment with flavors and kind of see their faces as they realize you can easily make drinks where you don't taste the alcohol. I am enough fucking babbling. Let's just get on into the skincare routine. I am first going to use my cellar water. Normally I'd use a cleansing balm, but I'm not really in the mood to get super messy down here. My bathroom is outside and I just know if I do that whole process here, shit is gonna get everywhere. And while I'm drinking, that is not the goal. Okay, I need to drink faster, like a lot faster. <laughs> So I'm first gonna go in with my favorite micellar water, the Bioderma Sensibio micellar water. I love this stuff. I have talked about it so much on my channel. I think this is like one of the only micellar waters I ever talk about on my channel. Oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> because I love it so much and I'm gonna be using it with a reusable cotton round where I do not know where I got this. It might have been PR, I might have bought it. <laughs> So let's first talk about me and drinking. My introduction to alcohol was relatively recent. I fucking love tequila. It's such a smooth ride. Every time I only drink tequila, I will have a smooth come up. I'll feel great. I'll feel like I wanna dance. I'll feel energetic. I have a smooth come down. I don't feel sick. I remember everything. And tequila is the only drink where I can come home afterwards and like get some work done or be productive or finish off the night and not just like collapse into bed. I love tequila. I know so many people hate it, particularly white people. Don't be mad because you guys can't handle I'm totally kidding. I mean, you try to put vodka by my lips. And ever since my introduction, I've always been passionate about making drinks, trying new flavors, all that type of shit. And I don't drink very often now. Like I am drinking more right now than I have in a while. Like I'll have one drink a week. The last year I had a drink like once a month, like never, like a single drink. And here we are having fucking eight drinks in a night. God bless. Okay, so now that the micellar water has gotten all my sunscreen off of my face, I'm now gonna go in with a cleanser and I'm just honestly gonna run upstairs, make a new cocktail, cleanse my face and come back down here because I really am just not in the mood to cleanse my face in my filming area. I'm too scared I'm gonna get it on my computer, on my microphone. And I'm gonna be using, of course, my classic, the one I do use every single day, the You To The People Kale and Green Tea Cleanser. It's a classic. If you guys are interested in getting any of the products that I'm talking about or showing you in today's video, you can find them in the description box below. I make a commission off of those links that helps support me and my channel, but no pressure whatsoever. They're just there if you want them. As I finish this drink, however, let me answer the first of many questions that you guys submitted on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, at Skincare by Hiram, you need to follow me because this is where I let you guys know when I'm doing stuff like this. This is how I answer questions from you guys, message you guys, so definitely go follow me there. Let's see, I wanna answer some really juicy ones. 
Oh my God, I absolutely love this question. Okay, it says, you blew up on YouTube fast versus other creators. What are the pros and cons of that? Love you. Then this is from Zoe, I believe her name is. Thank you, Zoe. This is an awesome question that I don't think a lot of people think through because if you aren't familiar, my growth on YouTube and TikTok was really, really fast. Like uh, there was one day on TikTok where I grew by 800,000 followers in a single day. And initially I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I love it. And don't get me wrong, it is amazing and I honestly would have it any other way and I'd say the pros of it is that it is just thrilling it's incredible because you go from practically waiting hours on your phone for a single notification that someone commented on your videos to a few months later this being your job your life your livelihood people are recognizing you in public it's such a cool experience and I'm so grateful I got to have it but there are some cons and I think one of the benefits of being able to grow slowly is that you're able to learn how to process everything and how to set yourself up and how to really equip yourself with the resources to to be able to handle long-term growth. You guys may not know it, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and I have a really big team to help me with so many different things. And when you're a creator who's growing over the course of four years, you have time to build your team, to find your editors, to find your financial teams, to find your business strategy teams, your brand management strategies. You're able to define your goals, know where you want to be, build connections, all this kind of stuff. And because I grew so rapidly out of nowhere, it's almost as if the industry expects you to be at that level when in reality two months ago you were making like ten dollars a month off of YouTube and I think the issue is is that in this industry there are so many people who want to take advantage of you and use you and it's scary having to grow so quickly you're expected to have a team around you who's able to help with everything you have time to learn how to delegate tasks bring on new people teach them how you do the work that you do so that you can have more free time instead of doing everything yourself and when there's so many terrible people in this industry that you know are just waiting to pounce on every opportunity that they can get to take advantage of your business but at the same same time you're expected to have people on your team now who know what to do who are fully running and managing the business it's so stressful I think one of the other disadvantages I've seen as well to growing quickly is that I think a lot of people don't know how to keep themselves in check when they grow really quickly because you go from being completely unknown to so many people knowing you within a matter of a few months like I love meeting you guys in public but it's sometimes really wild how many people are approaching me and how I've had moments when I'm just shopping where it kind of gets out of hand and when you go through that dramatic change within a few months I think a lot of people don't know necessarily how to keep themselves in check and that's why I'm so grateful I have people in my life to really keep me in check I'm so glad I live in Hawaii where people literally do not give a fuck if you are an influencer nobody cares and for me it's always felt the same so I definitely feel fortunate in the sense that I've been able to see life the same way as I did before and just because this is my job and just because this is where I'm at does not make you more entitled to anything does not excuse any type of negative behavior like it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is my relationship with you guys because that's powerful it's incredible and it's amazing and heartwarming but the rest of the stuff is just business it's whatever and I feel very humbled and fortunate by that but I know for a lot of other creators the experience is not necessarily the same and I unfortunately have seen people who went a small creator to a big creator in a very quick amount of time and you really watched how that took a toll on their values their ethics and how they treat other people and it's just really disappointing so I'd say that's a big challenge and there are so many pros and cons but I will say the pros far outweigh the cons like it is incredible and it has been so inspiring and life-changing all of this is because of you guys like you guys are the ones who made this happen this is not me this is you guys it's your support it's your love that's why I'm able to have an incredible life I don't know maybe I'm just babbling okay so I'm now gonna go cleanse my face I did finish my drink so I'm gonna make a new drink upstairs see you guys in a bit Oh, okay, so here we have a new drink. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. I didn't even tell you guys what my last drink was. I am so sorry. My goodness. The last drink was actually one of my favorite drinks to make. It's just a standard Moscow Mule, but instead of the vodka, there's tequila instead, and it's... So good. But now we have a pink grapefruit Paloma. Now I love Palomas, but this one's a little strong because it has three and a half shots of alcohol. Three and a half shots, ladies and gentlemen, in this little cup. Whenever I make drinks for my friends, they're always so surprised because I make my drinks strong. <laughs> I think it's because like I need a lot of alcohol in order to feel something. I need a lot, so I'm like, look, if you're gonna be drinking with me, then you gotta drink at my level. Don't blame me that you're weak. But this is really good. I just finished cleansing my face. Now I'm gonna go in with my treatment, which is actually the Inkyless Tranexamic Acid Night Treatment. I have been loving this one because it really does a good job of fading hyperpigmentation. Tranexamic Acid has so many good benefits. If you guys want a video where I deep dive into Tranexamic Acid, just let me know because I'm happy to do it. But I love this specific product because every time I use it, I notice that the pigmentation and redness in my face is way more balanced than it usually is. And it's actually becoming one of my 
favorite Inky List products. I have been thoroughly enjoying this one. So that means tonight we're gonna use this shit. So I'm just gonna take two pumps and apply it. I don't have a mirror in front of me, so I'm just gonna feel it out. Every part of my fist. I'm so sorry if I'm not entertaining yet. Trust, the alcohol takes a little while to set in, but when it does, Hiram is a good time. The nice thing about the drinks, what I've noticed so far, is that I'm not stuttering as much as I usually do. Fun fact, when I normally film my regular YouTube videos, I stutter so much. I have a difficult time like speaking as quickly as I do normally in my videos. I don't know why, it's just, it's the reality. I stutter so much and I think the nice thing about drinking is that this is going way faster and I'm not messing up over myself, which I'm sure my editor will be very thankful for. This is from Armin. She says, what things do YouTubers do that you absolutely hate? Are y'all ready? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just being super dramatic. Um, Honestly, I feel like there's a lot of love in the YouTube community and I'm so grateful to be a part of the skincare community, which is so loving, so supportive, so cohesive. It's amazing. So honestly, what I'm saying right now is not reflective of skincare YouTubers to my knowledge. It's more so other people in the YouTube sphere. But one thing that is a little bit shocking to me is the amount of interactions I've had with business contacts, with companies where I'll just be having a normal conversation with them. I'm, you know, doing my best to be respectful and they'll say, oh my gosh, you are such a a kind, nice person. I wish other influencers were like you. And I always engage them like, what do you mean? And I have heard so many stories of YouTubers just being nasty, disgusting, having superiority complexes, being unprofessional to work with. And the fact that a normal meaning where I don't even feel like I'm being nice, I'm just being respectful, elicits a response about me being nice, really says a lot about what this industry justifies and perpetuates in terms of behavior. And I think that's the thing I hate that YouTubers do most is feel like they're better than other people, feel like they're justified in treating other people like trash, consider themselves better than literally anyone. Like that concept just does not make sense to me. Like who the f are we? We are literally people who talk to a camera in our room. Like what is that doing to save the world? It's not. So humble yourself, bitch. It makes no sense to me. And honestly, I wouldn't think it's an issue had I not heard from so many business contacts, so many people in conversation, their expressed gratitude for me just being a nice person because that really goes to show how many clients and how many influencers they have to deal with that don't act the same way. It's really sad and it's really disappointing and it makes me want to not make any YouTuber friends. I mean, and thankfully I have made a lot of YouTuber friends. Like I feel like I'm very fortunate, but there always is that dynamic of like wondering like, are you friends with me because you just want to be friends with me and you're a nice person? Or are you friends with me because you want something out of me? You see me as a stepping stone and this isn't how you treat the average person. I don't know. And if I let myself think about it too much, I get really depressed. So <laughs> that's the thing I would say I hate most about what other YouTubers do. But thank God the skincare community is amazing and I've never noticed that personally. And I hope I will never notice it because you guys are awesome. I love this community that we're in. Okay, so I need to drink more because I am only on my second drink and bruh, I'm not feeling anywhere close to buzzed. Next, I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer. And I know that the Inculus Tranexamic Acid Treatment technically says that you don't need to use a moisturizer, but I'm just gonna pretend like that doesn't exist. Cause I don't know, I just still wanna use my moisturizer. So I'm going in with this new one. I actually haven't tried it before. It's from Village Factory. It's a Korean skincare brand. It's called the Dermaclear B5 Seca Cream. It's formulated with niacinamide, maticasticide, which is a really concentrated form of green tea, Centella Asiatica, and Panthenol. It is an incredible ingredient list, and I'm so excited to use this because it does like somewhat feel like a gel cream, which is nice. I mean, typically I do use heavier moisturizers overnight, but considering that I'm already using the tranexamic acid treatment, I don't need anything that's like too, too intense. And because this moisturizer is formulated with ingredients that are good for just like reducing sensitivity and moisturizing the face, I don't think it'll cause any problems in how it'll interact with the tranexamic acid treatment. Wow, it feels feels amazing. I love the texture of this one. Who knows? This may be a new favorite. Let's find another question. Oh my gosh. I love this question. It's from Amber. She says, what's one brand deal you really, really want? And honestly, I have gotten most of the brand deals that I was always like, oh, I would love to have that. That would be so cool. It would complement my content so well. But honestly, Corzo Tequila, you guys have no idea how much I love your alcohol. Corzo Tequila is incredible. It's a type of tequila that you can sip. And every time I've given a shot to people, because I'm not a shot person, I hate shots, but every time I give Corzo to someone and they take the shot, it doesn't burn. Well, okay, no, it does burn, but it feels like a nice warm sensation, but it doesn't create that like mm, type of feeling. It's so smooth and it's such such high quality tequila. I love Corzo. Corzo, if you're out there, if you're watching this, I would 100% do a sponsorship with you. <laughs> which is really funny considering that alcohol is not the best thing for your skin, but we're just gonna ignore that. Alcohol is bad for your skin, what? I've never heard of that. I mean, technically tequila is the healthiest alcohol and having a shot of tequila is actually good for you, so. 
I'm just putting that out there. Okay, now that my face feels dry, I'm gonna go in with my eye cream, which is a favorite that I've been using for a while. It was actually featured in my best skincare of 2020 video, the Versed Brightening Eye Gel. I love this one. I did not know how well it would actually work in reducing my dark circles. And I'm thankfully not someone who struggles with really, really bad dark circles, but they do come out every once in a while. And this does a good job of keeping it at bay while being a really good formula for sensitive skin. So yeah, I'm just gonna apply a little bit to my under eye area. I always use the ring finger. This has a good ingredients like stabilized vitamin C and ginseng, which are amazing for brightening any dark spots and hyperpigmentation on the skin. But overall, I've just never noticed any sensitivity with this formula, which is really nice because sometimes my skin does not like vitamin C. I've come to find that and I don't know, I've used this one for literally months and it helps with my dark circle so much. So I love it. Oh my God, Hiram, you are not drinking fast enough. Let's go, bitch. Okay, let's find another question before I finish my drink because you guys are really coming in with the deep questions. I love to see it. Farah or Farah, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. She actually asked, what's your relationship with your parents like? Answer only if you're comfortable. And thank you for putting that little um, comforting statement. Um, I usually don't talk a lot about my parents on my channel, but who knows? Maybe it's the drinks. I don't know. I don't really have a good relationship with my parents at all. They actually did sever the relationship once they knew I was gay, which is, you know, really unfortunate and sad, but what are you gonna do? You learn and you grow and you bring new people into your life. And I've never been one to hold negativity or hatred or anger necessarily towards my parents. Their reasonings for our broken relationship are unfortunately, you know, really based out of religion and discrimination, which is really unfortunate, but I've been able to keep a mindset understanding that, you know, they're still people, they still deserve good things. And I know that they think they're doing the right thing, but it's best for me to keep my distance, for me to separate myself. And my life has been so much better since I've done that. Like ever since I became my own person, separated myself from the expectations of my family. I've just felt so free and happy and I'm so, you know, in such a better place than I used to be. And the only reason I bring that up is not necessarily to draw attention to that because truthfully, I don't really like talking about it on my channel, but it's more so to encourage anyone out there who doesn't have a strong relationship with your parents, who doesn't have a strong relationship with your family. In a world that is constantly telling us that family and parents are the most important thing out there, don't worry. It's not, and even if you don't have a positive relationship with them, you can still be an incredible person. You can still change the world. You can still make a difference. You can still make a positive difference in other people's lives and that's what matters. Not your family's expectations, not what your parents want, what you accomplish in making the world a better place. And thankfully I feel like I've been able to do that in my small way and having that distance has done so much good for my life. So I'm grateful for it. In a weird way, I'm grateful for how strong of a person I am now because of that failed relationship. And I think it's helped me mature and focus on the most important things in life, which is of course helping others. Wow, this has gotten so deep. Oh my God, I usually do not talk about this stuff. The alcohol must be setting in. Okay, let's finish this. Ugh. I'm really hot when I go to the bar in the club. No wonder I don't get people buying me drinks. Anyway, let's go make another drink. I'll be back. Hey, got another cocktail. Three ingredient coconut margarita with sprinkled cinnamon over the top and a cinnamon stick. It looks really fancy, but honestly, the ingredient list is so simple that I'm like, is this even gonna taste good? <laughs> I really don't know. I'm really not convinced on this one. I don't think this one's gonna be very good. Hmm. It does not taste like how I expected. I barely taste the coconut. Well, it's really strong, that's for sure. Now let's go to the next step of my skincare routine. After I already did the eye treatment, I'm actually gonna go in with a product. And this is only because I'm drinking and I've noticed specifically when I drink that this product performs really well. It is the Versed Emergency Eye Mask. I love applying this one over top of my eye cream just because, particularly when I've been drinking, just because, I don't know, maybe it's all like, what's the word? What's the word in the scientific community where it's like a fake pill that actually doesn't do anything, but because of people's psychological power actually does work. Placebo, that's the word. <laughs> Honestly, it might be placebo, but I feel like every time I've used this product, my eyes look great and I feel like the dark circles are not as intense as they normally are, but I could be totally wrong. I have no idea. I'm feeling myself, I'm feeling my... <laughs> Ow. Let's look at another question. Oh my God, I love this question. It says, if you are on death row, what would your final meal be? That is a really good question. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just gonna say the first thing that comes to mind, Kraft macaroni and cheese. That shit's 
bussin'. I love Kraft macaroni and cheese. Like honestly changed my mind. Every time I go to a restaurant and order like the deluxe macaroni and cheese, I'm always disappointed because it's not as good as Kraft macaroni and cheese. Like that is the best. I don't know. I would probably choose that and something mango flavored. Maybe some boba too. I have recently realized that I think at one point I did have a boba addiction because I thought it's normal to get boba one to two times a day. That's what I used to do. And apparently that's not normal. It was like a part of my daily schedule and I am only now realizing like, hmm, Hiram, maybe you went a little bit intense with the boba. Another question. So I feel like I'm starting to feel the alcohol in the sense that I'm not tripping over my words as much as I usually do. I'm a little bit more relaxed. I'm not even buzzed, let alone drunk. I think if anything, I feel a little bit more relaxed, but that's about it. Okay, I love this question. It's actually from Steffi. Stephanie, I'm not sure what your name is. I'm so sorry. She says, have you ever been contacted by anyone you have done a review or reaction for? Yes, it is shocking because when I started doing my reaction videos, I was like, there's no way in hell these people are going to see my video, going to know who I am, let alone message me. Like there's no way, that's never gonna happen. And I honestly thought that was the case, but the remarkable thing is that most of the people I react to now do reach out on social media in some way, whether that be following me, whether that be messaging me, it's kind of common now, which is so weird to say, but the cool thing is that I've been able to connect with so many people that I honestly really look up to. And not gonna lie, I found girl a little bit every time it happens because I'm just like, oh my God, you're a real person. But uh, yeah, it happens more often now than it did. But at the beginning when I started doing reaction videos, it wasn't very commonplace. And every time it would happen, I would be, you know, screaming, jumping, running around my room, you know, the normal fangirl behavior. <laughs> and I am not ashamed. <laughs> Oh my God, someone literally asked me, why are you such a loner? Bitch, if I knew, trust, I wanna know. <laughs> that question kind of came for me hard, not gonna lie. I like my alone time, honestly. I think like as I've grown up, I've learned to just love being by myself. I love just being completely isolated, not having to talk to anyone, not having to think necessarily about having to contribute to a conversation. You only get to focus on just your thoughts, unadulterated, unfiltered, whatever you want. It's such a beautiful experience and I don't know, I love being by myself. And I know a lot of people out there say that being by yourself can be really lonesome and cause a lot of, you know, mental health issues and problems. And I do think it is important to be in touch with that. But I also think our society has a hyper concentrated fear around being alone. Like we constantly have to surround ourselves with other people. We constantly have to be texting other people. We have to always be engaged with conversation in some format. We always have to be stimulated. And that's one reason I love being alone is because there's just no stimuli, nothing. You are alone with your thoughts and you have to reconcile them. And I think that's that's where a lot of growth for me has happened personally. And I love it. It's great. It's something I've grown to love. And I highly recommend if you are someone who does struggle being on your own, work towards getting to that state because it really is liberating to be your own best friend. Okay, so now that I'm almost finished with my entire skincare routine, I am going to go in with lips and I'm going to be using the Jouer Essential Lip Overnight Mask. This one, Jouer sent it to me. And honestly, I thought Jouer was just a makeup line. But once I started looking through the ingredient list of their skincare products, I was shook. I had no idea that Jouer had such bomb formulas and while I will say like this lip mask isn't necessarily revolutionary it does have good ingredients and I overall like them and as I've used it in the past it feels really nice on the lips and it actually stays for a long time so I do enjoy this one and I am okay with fragrance in the lip care product because our lips face so many different irritants throughout the day when we just eat food oh okay this question is from Michelle she says any plans of moving from Hawaii I love Hawaii I plan to be here for a long time but I may temporarily move in the future for some business opportunities and to maximize as many business opportunities as possible. You know, it is difficult being in Hawaii where it's so far removed from the YouTube and skincare industry. So being in certain locations can be really beneficial in terms of maximizing those benefits. So in the future, I may temporarily move like that definitely is a real possibility, but long-term I do see myself staying in Hawaii because I just haven't found a better place and I love it here so much. Okay, finally, for the last step, we are going to be going in with the multi-peptide serum for hair density. I just started using this. I am trying to focus more on hair care. As you guys have probably seen, if you follow me on my Instagram or TikTok, I am talking more about the health of the hair. And I've heard really good things about this one. From my knowledge, you just massage it into your scalp. So that's why I apply it at the tops of my, ooh, my fingers. Honestly, where I want to apply the most is around the sides of my head, because that's where I see like the most like stress coming through. You know, when like you start to get gray hairs because of stress, I am at that point it is already here and it's stressing me out so I do want to apply this serum just to make sure you know I'm doing the best I can 
Uh, I finished this drink. You know, it actually wasn't that bad. I'm genuinely surprised because I did not expect it to be good. Am I acting different? I just feel like I'm not able to speak as quickly because of the alcohol, but who knows? Maybe I'm pissed drunk right now and I just have no idea. It's a possibility. Okay, this is a really creative question. I'm not sure what her name is, but she asked, how would you react if a skincare brand like St. Ives trashed you? I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it would be a smart move on their end, just because I think there's a difference between the way that you operate as a company and the products that you are trying to get people to buy and making it seem like they are really beneficial for their skin when, when in actuality they're not beneficial for the skin versus a singular person critiquing the brand. There is a definite power difference and I don't think it would be appropriate, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, like I try to provide my critique from a genuine place. I genuinely want these brands to do better, create better products, be more inclusive with the types of formulas they're developing. But sometimes people are not really responsive to that and they see it as an insult rather than an opportunity to grow. So I'm not going to be surprised if a brand is insulted by the things that I say, but I hope they can at least realize that I'm doing it from a genuinely good place that I want them to improve, that I want their company to be more successful than it is rather than just unnecessarily bashing them. Like, do you get what I mean? Okay guys, one more question because it has been two hours and I don't really feel the alcohol. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is getting late. This question is, have you always had such a juicy ass? Tell me the truth. <laughs> It's so funny, like I really don't think there was anything special about my body, but every time I do post full body pics, you guys always compliment me on my ass, which I appreciate. I thank you guys, that is very sweet. <gasps> I don't know, it's it's hilarious. I love it, I'm not complaining. This is the last question I'm gonna answer. I think it's from Shay. Um, she says, how are you doing in 2021 generally? So I think this is actually a good question because I don't think I've really talked a lot about this in the past, but 2020, while amazing, you know, going back to the pros of growing so quickly, it was amazing. You know, it was life changing. There were so many opportunities that opened up to me, but it was also very stressful. And at the end of 2020, I was pulling three to four all nighters a week. I had no consistent sleep schedule. I was constantly exhausted. I was just working nonstop, had no ability to focus on anything besides work. It was a lot. And at that time, I thought it was normal, but 2021 has really been an awesome opportunity for me to step back and realize Hiram, you're overworking yourself. Calm down, stop stressing yourself out and also important lessons like how I need to learn how to delegate, how I need to bring people onto my team, how I need to determine what I should be doing myself versus what things can be done by other people. I don't think a lot of people realize the amount of work that has to go into creating content. It's a lot. Even though it seems like I just film and then I upload and it's easy, we're good to go, but it's actually a shit ton of work and I can say that because of the amount of nights that I have lost all sleep, my chaotic schedule, all the people in my life saying, Hiram, you need to stop working. You are constantly working. You have no social life. You're missing out on friendships. You have to relax. And me never doing so. And I think 2021 has been the year of realizing so far how important it is to get away from work. And while 2021 will definitely be a crazy year, like I'm sure, so many things will happen. I think it's also important to realize that it's important to take time for yourself. It's important to take time off. Not everything is about work. Not everything is about your future. I don't need to be so stressed out about my career and I can take moments to sit back and relax. And it's awesome you know 2021 has been awesome so far I'm very grateful for the year I'm very fortunate to not be as stressed out as I was and honestly that's something I'm super grateful for I don't know if this video was a success or a failure I'm kind of feeling the alcohol but I'm not really feeling it but honestly that's just usually how it goes every time I'm invited out by friends people are either always like Hiram you seem pretty chill are you feeling the alcohol and I'm like nope or the very few instances rarely where I've had 20 drinks and I'm just like dancing it up on the dance floor there are only two extremes nothing in between and maybe just maybe one day you guys will be able to see drunk Hiram but I don't plan on it <laughs> anyway this has been fun I did my entire skincare routine I am all finished what did you guys think of this did you guys enjoy this did you guys think it was stupid let me know in the comment section down below I would love to hear your thoughts it was so much fun to answer your guys's questions on Instagram and if you do want to ask questions in the future make sure you follow me on my Instagram at skincare by Hiram you can always be involved in future videos whether it's videos like this where it's question and answer or if it's other types of videos you will have the first notification on Instagram and if you guys haven't already be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.